Jackson. Jeff Dukowski. Hi, I'm David Gallardi. This is um, <laughs> Stella Dukowski. Oh, Stella hey, Dukowski. This is Tim Dukowski. John Fantasia. And this is Joe Dukowski. Bernard Brulu. And our wonderful scene reader back there. Bud Sabatino. Okay. So, regret was not yet an experience which I was familiar. I married for love and righteously embraced the belief of the happily ever after story of joyful wedded bliss. Oh my, the never ending passion of true love. That was the best you ever had, right babe? Get out of my head, Jack. Just go back where you belong. I remember my mother and favorite aunt spoke of my impending marriage. They tried to warn me it would not be a bed of roses. <laughs> I laughed at their remarks and still hear my silly words. When I'm married, I'll spend all my nights looking up at the ceiling. Then, why did you ask me about how I felt when I didn't go to your funeral? Didn't you already know? You seemed to know so much. I saw images, babe. I didn't know your thoughts or feelings. Sure, I saw that you were sad, but I couldn't figure out why, because you were blocking me. Not like now. Nothing. Nothing? There's not a guy on planet Earth or in heaven who doesn't know that he's in big trouble when his woman says that word. <laughs> Even here, I'm in trouble. Don't you leave me alone. Fade out for Maggie and Jack. Lights up on Stella and Tim. It's not the same thing. I have to work. It takes money to keep paying off a mortgage and save money for retirement. I'm not leaving you in the streets. You, you're already with your mom half the time. Between her and Uncle Joe, you won't even know I'm gone. When I, when I get back, I'll have plenty of money to put a down payment on the house for you or, or anything else you want. I, I don't need your Think money. Men like hamsters on wheels. Picked up a fat ass and moved to North Carolina to live with a jerk off boyfriend. He treated her like garbage, he treated us all like shit, and she still took off him. You know? Dispensation? Stop. Don't talk anymore. <laughs> huh? you're, giving me a, you're giving me a migraine. She's late. I had two tickets to the game. Why is she late? Why did I let you talk me into coming? You know as much as I do. A doorbell rings and Marlene appears, carrying a briefcase and a box of fruit. Is she dead? <sighs> yes, your mother Maggie died very recently. That's why I call. I'm so sorry to bring you such bad news. Don't be. Did you know her mom good or what? Yes. We met when she lived in North Carolina. We became extremely good friends. Good friends, rotten mother. I take full responsibility. Yeah, you really screwed up, lady. Oh, stop it. You're not 12 anymore. You're not 12 anymore. Please, I beg you, stop this hostile behavior. Please, I beg you, stop this hostile oh! behavior. Stop it, please, Joey. Adults talk things out. Yes, yes, I made mistakes. But can we talk this out? Blah, blah, blah. Beautiful that it warms my heart to think about her. Tim and I did a lot of talking. I think we may be able to mend our fences. Stella was there for three days and I enjoyed every second I was able to spend with her. We bonded quickly. Tim even let me go alone with her to go get ice cream from around the corner. All the men in my family drank. You know, I mean, it seemed like the right thing to do. I'm sorry that I hurt you so much. I'll be right for you now, baby, I promise. I understand what matters now. You are my wife forever. <laughs> you were right for me, babe. And the day I saw you, every time I saw your face, I felt like Richard Burton seeing Elizabeth Taylor for the first time. No, no, I couldn't believe I was so lucky to get you. Wait, can you, can you forgive me for letting you down? I mean, can you? Can you forgive me in here, where it counts? The moment we danced, I filled with love for you, Jack. And now, I have to finish what I started. Lights on Maggie and Jack. They open their eyes at the same time. <clears throat> Just a baby herself. Remember your promise. Tim and Joe don't know. Nope. What's going to happen next? <laughs> don't know. It's all free will. 
I think our family needs the truth. We all have a little forgiving to do. You're ready now. Mm -hmm. Will they know my voice? No, darling. They won't know your voice. <laughs> now you're Marlene, a southern belle. And man, do you look good. I'd rather continue guzzling beer and acting like some drunken buffoon. You get to make the choice now. You just can't stop with the name calling, can you? Look, I, I don't got all day to keep shooting the shit with you. Why don't you finish what you have to say so we can leave? Don't look for reasons not to finish this talk. I want to get the fuck out of here. You used to be so much more... You! You used to be so much more understanding. What happened to you? When did you let other people convince you that I was the enemy and that you had to make a choice to kick me out of your life? What are you babbling about? Oh, you know I'm right. That's why every once in a while you jump in to defend me. Why did we always connect and have a good time? But as soon as you went back to your father's family, your attitude towards me was hostile all over again. Grandpa, I'm so happy I get to meet you. You're so tall. You? You're so beautiful. Just like your grandma here. I'm sorry, boys. I let your mom take the blame for everything. All these years. She did the best that she could since I was never around. Okay? I didn't understand how long it was that I wasn't there for the two of you. I thought my job was to work and bring home the money. That's what a man does. It takes more than just bringing home a paycheck to be a man, Joe. A lot more. A marriage is a special bond and I didn't honor it. Or your mother. Or the two of you. I should have been at your ball games. <laughs> and stepped up to the plate as your dad. Your mother is a good woman, and I did her wrong. She forgave me, and I want you guys to forgive me too. We can work through all this. Yep, we're one big happy family, or we will be after I have a good talk with mom. It wasn't right for her to keep me away from my grandmother and blame everything wrong on you, dad. You've always been fair to me, and I'm so sorry for being so mean to you. No, no, this is perfect, Stone, and remember she loves you. She, she did clean up her act to keep you in. And when you're ready to have the baby, I'll, I'll be there. N nothing can keep me away from Joe this. really sees Maggie. He moves to her and feels her pain and her love. He looks into her eyes and between the mother and son is a special and intimate healing of the spirit. In the seconds that follow, family love radiates the stage. A healing glow of light engulfs them. I love you all so much. I wanted you to know who I am before I leave. Do you have to go, Grandma? Mm -hmm. It's my time. I'm ready now because I know how much we all love each other. Hey, Mom, I, I, I just want you to know it's okay. <laughs> I know you have to go. I'm sorry. I, I do forgive you. Can you forgive me? Mm -hmm. You are my heart. Of course I can. Family matters. God put our family first. Creates the lifeline to our future. That's how we get to keep our love alive. And always be together. Oh, I'll love you all through eternity. Live your lives happy. Do that for me. No more pain. Just always keep us in your hearts. <laughs>